Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here, as always, with Tom or Tom. How's it going? Tony, we weren't planning on recording a show on Friday. We were just going to do our show on Saturday. But then sometimes, Tony, news happens. Tony, guess what just happened? Tell me, Tony. News. Tom. News. Uh, hmm. And I, was, I would say quite the news, but not unexpected news. Something that maybe we've expected to eventually happen. And maybe some of us even thought it would happen this quickly, but not that it has happened exactly yet, but uh, we have been told, and also Pete Thamel has been, is reporting that Quinn Ewers is transferring from Ohio State. He apparently uh, told the staff on Friday that this was happening. He has not come out and said anything yet. I don't, just looking at his Twitter I don't think he has done anything uh, to, he hasn't put it out there yet. He is trending, however, uh, as you might expect. So not unexpected. And Tom, I, we, we can talk about several things and we will. I said it back when he enrolled early. This is, uh, th- this it makes a, 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 this lessens his chance of ever playing at Ohio State or ever starting rather at Ohio State. And it started his clock early, and now he is apparently, reportedly by us, punching the clock and heading home. Yeah, I I mean, when this all happened, that he was reclassifying from 2022 to 2021, you kind of heard like, well, Ohio State's not like thrilled with it, but if that's what they need, you know, if that's what he wants to do, they're not going to say, no, 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 we won't take you now. And that's what he wanted to do. And, you know, it was kind of interesting at the time that this was not done, you know, primarily before on-field reasons. It was not, well, I feel I'm ready for the college game. It was, I'm going to start making NIL money. And I mean, like he basically came out and said, like, I, I'm doing this because I can't make NIL money as a Texas high school player. So I'm going to go to college and get NIL money. And he had the kombucha deal. He got a truck. He got all, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. So that worked out, but he just, he came so late. He showed up in like mid August and then had some just health stuff and wasn't able to participate in practice for a while. And was just a million miles behind. And then once the season starts, you're not getting reps. You're not, you know, you're not, you're not repping with the twos. You're not repping with the threes. You're just you know, every time Brian Day was asked about it, he was like, yeah, he's still just trying to like figure his way around the building. And Day at one point before he played in the Michigan State game, like the week before that, he's, you know, so like, well, he's walking around the building, like looking, looking more confident now. It's like, well, okay. I mean, that's, that's a step, I guess. And he did take a few snaps, did not throw a pass, but you know, he was never, this was never like, you know, I mean, Everyone on Twitter, like, you know, if every time CJ Stroud threw an incompletion, it was like Quinn Ewers would start trending on Twitter. It's like, I don't think that he's really that close to contributing yet. And the year of, you know, the year, coming to Ohio State a year early, based on when he did it, how it sort of played out afterwards with the health stuff, like very clearly, this was a significant net negative for him in terms of his on field. It was great for him financially, but in terms of his on field, like, I think he goes into next year, wherever he is, further behind than he would have if he had just played his senior year of high school and then enrolled wherever next year, whether, you know, whether that was Ohio State or Texas, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, like whatever it is. I think he's behind where he would be otherwise because he did what he did. Yeah, absolutely. He essentially missed a year of football when he could have been taking 400 snaps playing high school. Uh, It was never a good football decision. We'll see if it works out for him. It it very well may, but when day is saying stuff like he he knows where he's going now, I'm just imagining like Ohio state has biometric, like thumb press prints all over the building. And I'm thinking he finally stopped seeing that as a retinas, retina scanner. And then, you know, (laughs) learned like, no, it's your thumb. Like that, that's the level of how not, not behind, but just, it was not easy for him. And it's not meant to be easy for a high school senior. None of it is for any position, especially one where you need a year to learn the offense. And some guys need more than that. And so now 
you have this uh, th- this inevitability that when when one bad decision gets made it's hard to then expect that to necessarily be corrected because the decision was in terms of in terms of him playing at Ohio State this was a bad decision like in terms of him ever playing at Ohio State this is a bad decision and so you can't necessarily expect good decisions to come after that and uh, i don't know exactly probably it was not a good decision to especially this year to skip a year and enter into a quarterback room where the two guys who played last year now have a free year as well and you're entering a room where there are four technically true freshman quarterbacks and you are the one that is on the bottom of the totem pole you're not going to get anything you come in after everybody has already been here and they can't make you happy they can't you you need to as tony alfred says the players need to make the coaches happy like they can't spend enough time with you to give you the kind of attention that you need but also you have screwed things up by speeding things up and we can talk about ohio state fans i see it already on twitter the buckeye screwed up by not playing him no like this is not a situation where he could have played because he wasn't ready. So what are you going to do? Like he's not going to stay because he got to throw the ball six times against Michigan State. That's not he, – he, this was never going to happen. C.J. Stroud, Kyle McCord, as long as those two guys are here, there's no spot for Quinn Ewers and Quinn Ewers' eyes. And by enrolling early, that started that clock. If he gets here next year, he's not concerned about C.J. Stroud. C.J. Mm-hmm. Stroud is going to be gone after 2022, and then Quinn Ewers can – battle for the job as a redshirt freshman against uh, another or you know, against redshirt sophomore Kyle McCord. And uh, that's never going to happen now. And I don't know that we ever really saw that happening. And in, in, like, you know, it, it was nice to think that there would be a Quinn Ewers Kyle McCord battle. That would have been mm-hmm. fun to watch, but from every source and every uh, person that we've talked to, uh, like Quinn Ewers also never really endeared himself to his teammates and, when you come into a, a school and you are you arrive late, you show, like you show up late, you're a freshman, you've done nothing, and you've got seven figure NIL deals. Maybe this is one of the drawbacks, or one of the this is certainly one of the consequences of that. Where maybe it's harder for you to be endearing mm-hmm. when you've got all of this going. And I'm not saying it's jealousy. I'm saying you still have to comport yourself in a manner like a freshman does. Well, you know, it's interesting that you have you you look at some of the quarterbacks who got the really huge NIL deals during the offseason. Spencer Rattler, DJ Uyangalele, when yours, like Bryce Young did, and Bryce Young had a great year. It's this is not a 100 percent correlation, but there's a lot of those guys where they did not have the fall that they were probably expecting to have. And I, I say this as someone who was extremely pro NIL and remains extremely pro NIL. This is going to be something when you go back to the shows when they first announced the NIL thing, I think you're going to hear me say, you know, this is going to be something where there are going to be some lessons learned and some, you know, there are going to be companies that give a lot of money or a big shiny truck to a guy and then he doesn't pan out at all. And it's like, well, that was an expensive lesson, but we learned our lesson. You know, there is a balance that you have to strike where, you know, you can get your, you can make your money and get your deals. But you gotta, you know, you have to do the on-field stuff too, or the, you know, or or the money dries up. You have to, you have to keep performing, or the money dries up. I, I, you know, you heard about yours all fall, like homesickness, and and, you know, he was just he put himself, and he willingly put himself, in a very difficult position where, you know, you're you're coming in. And this is not, you know, this was a hard job for Kyle McCord. Kyle McCord at the beginning of fall camp was not the number two quarterback. Kyle McCord is the number three quarterback. And he came back in back in January. So he had to beat out Jack Miller. And it took a while to beat out Jack Miller because Jack Miller had a year head start. Kyle, uh, when you were shows up in August, Kyle McCord has seven months of a head start, which is all of spring ball, plus all the summer workouts and the start of fall camp. Jack Miller had a year and a half over him. CJ Stroud had a year and a half over him. And you know, every time we talked to quarterbacks, I remember, you know, Go back to talking to Tate Martell, go back to talking to Matthew Baldwin, all these guys. And it was just, you know, a year in, they go, oh, I thought I knew what I was doing last year. I didn't have a clue. Like, it's going to take a while. And for uh, you were to have shown up in August 
you know, if he showed up in January, maybe he's, you know, maybe he is the number two quarterback by the end of fall camp. You know, maybe that's a possibility. That's what that's what happened with with McCord. But he by showing up in August, he gained four months of NIL deals instead of just showing up in January. But he also put himself, you know, to the point where if if you had any expectation of doing anything this year, like that was just not reasonable. You just you you were so far behind guys who are, you know, these are not a bunch of three-star schnooks you're behind either. Like these are these are high four, low five star, mid five star kind of players you're behind who also have the head start on you. And it's like, yeah, you're you're a real good quarterback, I'm sure, but it was not realistic to expect you're going to play. And if you're used to being the star, that's probably a tough adjustment. And if it takes, you know, if, you know, you're the new, you're the new kid in school, like, you know, this is not, this is not, uh, you know, everyone moves into high school and, uh, you know, no one knows anyone because they've got, you know, three middle schools and they all merge into the same high school. So everyone has all these new people in their class. You jumped in in the middle of fall camp. All these guys have been around for months. All these guys have been, you know, recruiting. They, they know each other from recruiting, all of that stuff. You don't, I mean, these, you, these are guys who are not in your recruiting class. You know, the guys from the class of 2022, not the class of 2021. So this is just all new. And, you know, all of that adds up to like, yeah, this is, this is going to be a difficult adjustment and you're in a different state and you're, you know, you're not playing, you're not even close to playing for most, most of the season. Like that's, that's all just pretty much an impossible spot to be in. Yeah, in in football terms, he was done no favors by the people around him advising him to do this. Mm-hmm. And but again, it wasn't a football decision. But all of this is a football decision because he is a football player, and the NIL is there because he plays football. And this was a a short term gain. We will see uh, if if it's you know where where he ends up, how that shakes out. We know there's rumblings of uh, ending up back somewhere in Texas. I don't think anybody would be surprised by that. It sure seems like he wanted to get back home, and uh, you you just wonder if that would have been the case, even if he enrolled normally next year, and how much he would have eventually just wanted to come back home as well. And at that point, how would Ohio State have been left shorthanded? Because now, with Quinn Ewers gone, the the decision on like like does if Quinn Ewers stays, the coaches kind of have to decide. Okay. We might have to keep one of Kyle McCord or Quinn Ewers happy. And yes, players' job is to keep coaches happy. Quarterback is a little bit different because if one guy does if one guy isn't happy, he's gonna leave. So you, you almost have to put your, you know, seven of your eggs in one basket and five in the <laughs> other, that sort of thing, so that one guy feels like he's getting more attention than the other. Now, if Quinn Ewers goes through with this and doesn't change his mind, at least now. Kyle McCord has those eggs. And yeah, Devin Brown will be here. I'm not sure if he's enrolling early. He may. But now Kyle McCord sees a better path for himself. And I think that that solidifies some things. And we see a lot this year where Ohio State has different options and didn't didn't necessarily have answers at certain positions. They know their questions and answers now at quarterback. And I think that's a good thing. I think the the recruit Knicks and the recruiting followers who think Quinn Ewers just can't miss because he's the highest ranked quarterback ever since, I don't know, Vince Young or something like that, whatever. I mean, he showed up, never really was able to showcase any of that, and not because he wasn't allowed to, but because, I mean, you, you have to show an ability to do it. And, you know, he did get reps. You have to be able to pick it up. You have to know the offense. You have to be able to do this, do that, and do that. You can't just show up and, like, I know how to throw the ball. Now how it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you're a better quarterback if you know the offense than uh, than if you can just throw the ball. And I think everybody understands that. And and, and maybe Quinn Ewers didn't, and he, he's going to have to. Uh, this is, I didn't expect this on a on a Friday. I didn't expect it this early. I think we knew Ohio State was going to be losing two quarterbacks to the transfer portal. It was just a matter of would it be McCord or would it be Ewers. And, and, and now we know, but I think um, this solidifies things moving forward. It, it sure seems like it. Cause now Kyle McCord, like you said, I mean, you've got, you know, CJ Stroud. I don't think there's any real danger of CJ Stroud entering the transfer portal as a potential Heisman finalist and, and, you know, returning starting quarterback for next year and all that kind of stuff. 
you know, we, I think we talked about coming out of spring ball next year, you know, over under of uh, two and a half of the quarterbacks of the four quarterbacks from this fall still being on the roster at the end of spring ball next year. And, you know, I, I think that was, I think the expectation was one of these two guys is going to be the number two guy coming out of the spring. And the other guy who is not the number two guy is going to go. Kyle McCord obviously was a significant amount ahead of Quinn Ewers. And maybe this is just kind of a little bit of writing on the wall for Ewers where it's like, you know, McCord is number two. McCord started a game this year. He was very clearly the number two guy off the bench. The writing was very clearly on the wall for Jack Miller. As soon as McCord passed Miller, it was like, okay, so Jack Miller is going to be one of the two guys who leaves. You know, for Ewers, it was going to be a challenge for him to beat McCord out for that number two job with, you know, again, you started eight months late. You, you're missing all these reps from this fall where, you know, he was getting some reps, but he's, you know, if you're the number four guy, like, what are you, <laughs> you going to do? How many reps are they supposed to give you during a game week while they're prepping for a game? That's, that's a spring ball thing. That's a summer camp, summer throwing thing. Like, and you missed all that stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I think ultimately if this keeps, if it makes it more likely that Kyle McCord sticks around and it certainly feels like it should, and it sounds like it should, then ultimately this is, this is, you know, Ohio state is not in a bad spot quarterback wise. If you have returning starter, CJ Stroud, now second year guy, second year backup, Kyle McCord going into next year. And then after 2023 or 2022, that is likely 2023 starter Kyle McCord at that point. And then that's his third year. And then after Kyle, you know, if Kyle McCord leaves after 2023, well, Devin Brown, whoever's coming after and after in uh, the 2023 class, you know, then, then they, those guys are fighting it out. It, you know, I think it's very easy to look at this and, and get to the, you know, Ohio state's pets heads are falling off part of the conversation pretty quickly where it's like two quarterbacks have transferred out. The, the sky is falling. They lost to Michigan. Two quarterbacks have transferred out everything. It's like, this is the world brother. Like this is, this is the transfer portal era, especially at the quarterback position. Lots of quarterbacks are transferring out. DJ Uyangalele is back up is transferring out. That came out on Friday. Like it's just, this is what it is. And you know, Ohio state, because they keep stacking these five-star talents like Stroud, like McCord, Devin Brown, a, you know, a top 50 kind of guy coming in in 2022, they, they still have much more depth than just about anyone else in the country at that position. And that's, I mean, that's huge. And, you know, this, I think, goes back to one of our earlier conversations, you know, would Ohio State be better served to also spend a scholarship on a three-star guy from Ohio? Who can just provide, you know, come in, who is willing to come in and say, look, I am not going to start more than likely. Bring in the Kenny Guyton type. And if he has to start, he has to start. But, you know, is that something that's worth pursuing again? Find that three star Ohio guy who just wants to be a Buckeye, who is the Gunner Hoke, who is the Chris Chuganoff type, you know, and maybe that comes through the portal, maybe that comes in recruiting, whatever it is. But have someone who is a multi-year kind of fixture in that room to provide a little bit stabi- a little stability, provide a little bit of veteran presence, maybe. Because you know, you, you're at the point where I don't know that I ever expect an Ohio State, you know, a, a Ryan Day recruited quarterback to stay beyond three years. You know, Stroud, you would expect three years off to the NFL. McCord, three years off to the NFL. You're, you're not going to have the four and five year quarterbacks anymore. It might be valuable to have one of those guys. But that's not the five-star guy because the five-star guy is either three years off the NFL or if he's not starting, he's transferring. This is Brian Day's third year at Ohio State. Here are the quarterbacks he's signed. All right, Justin Fields, we'll give him credit for that one. Jack Miller, C.J. Stroud, Kyle McCord, Quinn Ewers. And that's a three-year span. Three of those guys are gone. and. But the fact that he's been able to get these guys year after year, like I, I'm with you on the the Ohio kid. I mean, I've been saying that forever. But Day is also proving, like, eh, don't worry, I got I got this. I'll just go get. Uh, there's a kid in Utah. There's mm-hmm. you know the Stroud kid in California. I hear he's pretty good. And and you know whatever, just go get one of those guys every year. And if I have to get two, you know, I I can do that as well. I can I can go get a five star as my second quarterback. I'm known to do that, and that's. That's what he's doing. But 
you do that with the understanding of you're going to have five quarterbacks over a three year span. And at one point you're just going to have two of them, you mm-hmm. know, and, but then they will replenish that with Devin Brown, who is a top 50 player. And now they go into next season with three scholarship quarterbacks, which is about where they as accepted it will be because they had four this year, which is a rarity. And then that's been his number, but he's also said like, it's, it's hard to have four scholarship quarterbacks in today's day and age. You're seeing exactly why, because you lose two. If you've got Tom, if you've got four quarterbacks, you only got two quarterbacks. I think mm-hmm. that's basically the math that is, that is going on here. But um, I just, I can't stress this enough for the, for the Buckeye fans who are going to be angry at Ohio state or Ryan day for letting Quinn Ewers go. I, you know, I, I just, I don't think it's their fault. And this is not me being a homer or anything. It's, yeah, Quinn Ewers, he throws a sidearm and it's fun. And he has an incredible arm. And he's, I know it's a, you, you want these five star quarterbacks. They've got some, they've got other ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they've got guys who have played and showed enough to play. This isn't on Ohio State. This is on Quinn Ewers for leaving. This is on mm-hmm. Quinn Ewers for uh, enrolling early. This is for the advice he's gotten to do both of these things. And again, they play him. He may not want to be in Ohio. He's a Texas guy. I mean, and so the last thing you want to do is is, is uh, just hitch your wagon to him. And then he's like, yeah, I'm going back to Texas. Thanks, though. Well, I mean, like I said earlier, we, we had heard some homesickness stuff with him. It hasn't gotten cold yet. Like, I mean, it's not I mean, it's <laughs> kind of cold, but it's not like cold, cold. Like when, when the alarm's going off on January 29th, at five in the morning and coach Mick is calling and it's 13 degrees outside outside and the wind chills minus two. Like if you, if you're homesick in October, like I, I got bad news about what's coming in January, you know? And, and so you, to your point, you can't, you know, the argument that, well, they should have, they should have done more to keep him. Like you can't, you know, you can't coddle this kid because if you coddle him, then Kyle McCord's looking around going, well, what the heck, mm-hmm. man? Like, what, why, why are you treating him different than me? And then Kyle McCord leaves. And then it is still cold in January. And then Quinn Ewers leaves. And then you get a real problem. So, you know, o- Ohio State, I think, very clearly has its two best quarterbacks from this fall still on the roster. Like, I don't know that there's anyone that would argue that point other than maybe Quinn Ewers. But I, I just, you know, you look at, you look at, it's not like Ryan Day had it out for this kid. It, you know, Ryan Day wanted this kid to come to the point that Ryan Day was willing to accept this very unusual arrangement in order to get him to come. Now, I think there's going to be a lot of, I think this is going to be a learning uh, experience for the head, for the Ohio State football program, probably for a lot of programs around the country. Cause you, you saw this as like, oh man, this is going to be the new path to like, mm, I don't know that it is. I don't think that that is going to be the new model for uh, player movement. You may see it more in the future, but all of a sudden this is going from boy this might be a uh, you know someone who is starting a you know a brand new movement and it's going to be incredible and it's like mm, maybe this is a cautionary tale and that's where it feels like it is right now to me you know over under 1.5 starts for Quinn Ewers we don't know where he's going over under 1.5 starts for Quinn Ewers next fall hmm I'm just trying to think of of who is uh, of of the rumored teams. You know, I think because um, even if it's Texas A and M, they had some quarterback issues this year. I could see that mm-hmm. continuing. I think any team that signs him kind of does it like, oh, well, now we have to play him. Like mm-hmm. that's that's part of the deal, or else we know what happens if he doesn't play. So I'm going to go over, and you might want to. Um, reassure him by naming him your number one quarterback after spring. I mean, there's, there's already proof that he's not the most patient guy and every decision he has made has been flying in the face of slow down. Like let's use some patience and it's, it's not skip your junior, you skip your season, senior season, leave after what? uh, August. September, October, November. Not four even, months? not even four months. Yeah, yeah, not even four months. So, I, you know, that's. I wonder if he even got his mail changed. Um, so this is, I think, I hope it's a cautionary tale for the players as well. 
Mm -hmm. Like, again, great. You got a bunch of money in the bank and I'm not, I'm not glossing over that, but will you be able to like, is that all that's going to come from this? And, and will there be the NIL is, is pocket change to what he could make in the NFL. And so you, you just hope you don't keep churning through schools while you keep thinking you're being shortchanged, but in fact, you've never allowed the roots to grow at a place and, and really embrace it and, and just do everything that, that being the number one quarterback requires. And that's something that it takes more than just arm talent. And it, and it takes more than just a name recognition. It takes so much more. And he has all of that, but if you don't use it, then I mean, it's, it's going to waste. Yeah. And, you know, I think you can go through and look at some of the past quarterbacks who are maybe similar cautionary tales where, you know, Tate Martell committed to how many different schools before he came to Ohio State, Washington and Washington and Texas A&M and then Ohio State. Right. And then came to Ohio State and then went from Ohio State and then went to Miami and then went to UNLV and still hasn't. I don't know that he started a game yet in the college level. I mean, there is a certain there is a certain uh, and I don't I don't know. Quinn Ewer's family at all that, you know, at all, but you know, there is, there is a certain type with quarterback dads sometimes or quarter, you know, quarterback families where it's like, you know, you, you have spent the entire, you know, your entire high school career being told you're special and you're remarkable and you're going to be an immediate impact guy. And then when that doesn't happen, because the quarterback position is so unique where it's not, you know, Trevian Henderson probably also was being told he was pretty special. Like if you're a five-star talent, like, yeah, Well, guess what? You can play more than one running back much more easily during the course of a normal game flow than you can a quarterback. And that's that's one of the challenging things. And that's one of the reasons that I think you see so much more churn at the quarterback position early in guys careers is it's much harder to get on the field very early in in your career. And it's much harder to make an immediate impact. And, you, you know, you have you're being you're used to being the star. You're used to being the center of attention. And then that can, you know, that, that can be a tough adjustment and it can be a tough, you know, it can be a little bit humbling. It's a, it's a humbling thing being humbled as a wise man once said. So, you know, that, that is a, uh, you know, that again, maybe a little bit of a cautionary tale, but this is, this is, these are kind of like the table stakes for playing at the level that Ohio state is in terms of quarterback recruiting. And you'd much rather have two five-star quarterbacks still on your roster, even if it means that a couple guys transferred out rather than be in the position that probably 125 other schools in the nation would, you know, Texas A&M right, right now would love to have Ohio state's quarterback problems, like love it. And they are, you know, that's Jimbo Fisher, QB whisperer, nine, you know, $900 trillion contract, man. Like th- there's a lot of teams, Oklahoma, I think, frankly, right now would love to have Ohio state's quarterback problems. So yeah, that's, that's the, you know, Yes, yes, it's not ideal. Yes, this has not been a super fantastic week in terms of like net roster movement. But in the end, like I said, I think Ohio State still has the two best quarterbacks that they had this fall still on the roster. Yeah, and that's a key point to take away. My last point is just because a quarterback transfers doesn't mean he's not going to pan out. That's mm-hmm. we, We've seen how many Heisman winners in a row. Ohio State was the beneficiary of Justin Fields. So it's not he's either going to be Quinn Ewer or he's either going to be Tate Martell or Justin Fields. Like there's, there's a wide, uh, or there's just a wide uh, variety of outcomes that could come from this. So I I don't even want to ask, is this going to be Tate Martell or is this going to be Justin Fields? Because it may be just somewhere in the middle, and you hope for you know his sake and, and that the decision making turns out positive for him and he is more Joe Burrow and Justin Fields than some of the, the cautionary tales. But even if it works out fine, I still think the cautionary tale is there of don't try to get old so quickly because you're not ready for it. You're still, you can try to become mature, but you're doing it as an immature person and just relatively immature. I mean, he's probably as, as most quarterbacks are from quarterback families probably been held back a year or two, you know, like mm-hmm. that's the red shirted as a fourth grade or something like that. But um, so it, it's just, you know, you, you can go ahead and, and stay four years in high school. The NFL is not going to you know hold it against you. 
why did it take you four years to get through high school? You know, like, like they do in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Why did you play for five years in college? It's not, you know, this is understood. This is what people do. And, you know, I, I think there's some development that you can miss just by not having that extra year of schooling and being, being a leader, being one of the elders in a group. Like he never mm-hmm. really had that, even as a quarterback, sure, leading a program. But you know, if, if you're never like the oldest guy, then when you show up as the youngest, youngest, youngest guy, you're just completely a fish out of water. Tom, I think we've covered it. Anything else uh, on this entire thing? Like, I don't think this is devastating for Ohio State by no. any means. Because no. like, like you said, they still have the two best quarterbacks and likely the two quarterbacks who are going to take them, you know, from for for the next couple of years right and and you know i think brian day has done a very good job stockpiling good talent and you're not going to be able to keep everyone and i don't think this is a huge surprise it was not you know jack miller transferring was such not a surprise that we didn't even do a. I don't know that we've actually mentioned it really on any of the shows this week it's just you know it's like yeah that that was going to happen there are going to be other guys that are going to transfer too but yeah ohio state is you know if you were to make a list of two positions where this guy transferring has you know functionally zero impact on your uh, emo- you know your view of the position you know and the position of strength at Ohio State like quarterback and wide receiver would probably be my two like it just R- Brian Hartline and Ryan Day stockpile talent in those rooms in a way that it's like yeah you're not going to keep all of them because there just are not enough footballs to go around but the ones that they keep are the ones that they've you know that they've see are, are the ones that stay are the ones that they have evaluated as being the best ones. And therefore they're the ones who are getting the most reps. And so therefore the ones who are most likely to stay. And therefore, you know, those are, those are probably your best guys. They have more information than any of the recruiting services do any of the other, you know, any of the outside evaluators do anyone on a message board does. So yeah, I don't, I don't think I, I would view that as anything to be deeply concerned about right now. Like it, you know, it, the, the, I think everyone saw the, the headline and kind of gasped, but, Bottom line is, I, I, you know, I don't think this materially impacts Ohio State's ceiling for 2022 and beyond. No, I, I wonder how early did the coaches think this might happen, and I wonder if it was even before he enrolled or like when he had to go home. Was it? Were there some thoughts like, I, I, I wonder if he's going to come back? You know, like at what point did they know? Because I don't think they were caught off guard by this. They're, they mm-hmm. see him every day whether he's unhappy talking to Corey Dennis, talking to Ryan day, this isn't like, there's no silent treatment going on. There's constant communication. So I don't think anybody was surprised or caught off guard by this. Another reason why they went and and went as hard as they did after Devin Brown. So wish nothing but the best for Quinn Ewers. Uh, Maybe he changes his mind. Maybe he doesn't, but obviously, you know, you hope everybody succeeds to the utmost of their ability. So that will do it for our, kind of a, an emergency podcast there on the news that Quinn Ewers is going to hit the transfer portal. Uh, yeah, he should announce something pretty quickly and we'll see what happens just as quickly after that. And then that team that he goes to remember the quarterback departures that left Ohio state once Justin Fields came in. Mm-hmm. So you add one, sometimes you lose two. It's funny how that math works out that way. So well, it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. So thank you all for tuning in. And we will talk to you guys later.